Listen, if this winter has your skin feeling dry, dull, and itchy, I've got some affordable products that we're gonna talk about in this video that'll help you to get hydrated and glowing skin. But there are also some habits that I'm gonna need you to acquire. Otherwise, you might as well just throw all your products in the garbage. Keep watching. So let's start out with a morning skincare routine. So in the morning, you're gonna start with a gentle cleanser that is for your skin type and your current skincare needs. Now that it's colder out, you may want something a bit more hydrating than what you might have used in the warmer months. Now, some of you, I put a word here being some, <laughs> some of you may benefit from just rinsing your skin with water in the morning and moving on to the next steps in your skincare routine. In particular, if you have very dry sensitive skin, you might find that beneficial. But of course, you're going to cleanse in the evening. A few affordable cleansers that I really love. I've talked about the La Roche-Posay Lipicar Face Wash. You can use it for your face and body. It seems like it might have like a hefty price tag because it's $14.99 but you can use it for your face and your body and you get 13.5 ounces of product for that $14.99. I like it because the formulation is pretty simple so there's not much in there that can irritate even the most sensitive skin. Fragrance free, you also got glycerin in there which is a well-known and well-performing humectant. It also has niacinamide aka vitamin B3 which is known to do many many amazing things for the skin including helping to repair the skin barrier which is good for both dry and oily skins. But like some other boring drugstore cleansers, I actually feel like I have a nice experience when I use this one. Another gentle cleanser that can work for most skin types that I've just tried out recently, Vanna Cream has a facial cleanser. It has glycerin in it. It's not fragrance free, but it is unscented. I know that's a little confusing, but you know, I have a blog post on it if you want to get, learn some more information. And if you have very dry skin, a fan favorite is the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. I like it, but I do find that it leaves a bit of a film on my skin that I don't particularly love, but that might be something that's great for someone with extra dry skin, especially during this winter season. Now, your skin should not feel squeaky clean after you cleanse it. If your skin is feeling squeaky clean after you've cleansed it, you might be using the wrong cleanser. Some of y'all are out here overdoing it with the cleansing and exfoliation and it has got to stop because what can happen is you do that a little bit too much and you can impair your skin's barrier. And when your skin's barrier is impaired, it cannot function in the way it needs to protect you. And it can make you more susceptible to irritation, which can lead to inflammation, which on this channel, you know that can lead to hyperpigmentation. Now, while your skin is still damp, it's a good idea to apply a hydrating toner, essence, or serum if you feel like you need one. Now, the reason why you wanna do this while your skin is still damp is that most hydrating products have humectants in them, whether that's hyaluronic acid or glycerin or so on and so forth. And these products love hydration and moisture. So it's just gonna thrive in that environment. I recently picked up the CVS brand, you know, only because that was the drugstore that was nearby when I was trying to film. But I recently picked up their hydrating serum, which they compare to the CeraVe hydrating serum, which I haven't tried. If you've tried it, you know, get all in the comments, get all chitty chatty with your fellow man and woman and let them know your experience with it. But the CVS serum, I found it to be a thicker serum, almost like a lotion sort of experience. Once applied to damp skin, my skin felt very hydrated and you know, my pockets was liking it. Cause you know, sometimes that, you know, the store brand, maybe, you know, you get a little coupon or whatever, you stay a little changed. Now, not everybody's going to need a separate hydrating product in your routine. One easy way to tell whether or not you need a separate hydrating product in your routine is if you're going through your routine and you're using your regular products and you feel like you little, need a little more in terms of hydration, then you probably need a little more in terms of hydration. Now, your treatment products. Good news, you may not have to do anything different with your treatment products that you've been using all year long, as long as nothing has changed with your current skincare needs. But some of your treatment products that you've been using all year long without any issue 
might all of a sudden start to feel a bit drying in the winter time. Vitamin C, retinoids, and some topical prescription medication may have that kind of effect on the skin, but here's what you do. So you can do one of two things. One, you can lessen the use of those products. So instead of using them every night, maybe use them a couple of nights a week. This gives your skin time to recuperate in between applications. Two, you can apply your moisturizer first and then your treatment products. Some people may benefit from doing like a sandwich method that we learned about on Dr. Alexa Stevens' channel, which I will link so you can check it out. Basically, you put your moisturizer on, give that a couple of minutes, then you put the treatment product on, give that a little bit of time, and then you put your moisturizer on again. If you have very dry, sensitive skin, or skin that has become dry and sensitized because of the elements out there, you might wanna try that. Now, if you do this during the day, remember your sunscreen is going to be your last step in your skincare routine during the day. Now, another thing to know is that this method doesn't always work for everybody because some of us use products that have different textures that aren't compatible with other textures, for instance, something oil-based and something water-based. In that instance, you may want to try different scenarios to figure out what works best for you or give yourself more time in between each step so that the product can absorb before you move on to the next one. That helps to avoid issues like pilling where the product is just kind of like building up on your face. Now, your moisturizer is probably the product in your routine that you're probably going to need to change as the seasons change. In the winter, you're probably going to look for something that's more or nourishing, even if you have oily skin. So Dr. Alexis Stevens has a video on the best moisturizers for hyperpigmentation, but there is a parallel here. So in the video, she talks about looking for vitamin F in these moisturizers. So while these fatty acids have pigment reduction abilities, they also have the ability to prevent trans epidermal water loss, which is a term that basically means our skin has a hard time holding on to the hydration that it desperately needs. And as people of color, we get this bad. Some might say it's the scientific term for ash, you know? Why we're ashy? Anyway. I actually have a video where I tried out some of these vitamin F moisturizers. I will link it above and below. But in it, I try moisturizers that are lightweight, medium weight, and heavy weight. So if you're looking for some options, check that out. An affordable option to check out is the La Roche-Posay Lipicar Lotion, $14.99, but you're getting 13.5 fluid ounces of product. And this is something that you can use on your face and your body. Now I have oily skin and I've used that lotion before on my face. It ain't bad, especially when it's cold and dry out. You're gonna appreciate it. Now, sunscreen. And yes, you need to wear sunscreen in the winter time. Now I was supposed to film this scene where it was still daylight, but you know, the time escaped from me, but you still need to wear sunscreen in the winter. The sun is still out. And also factors like the snow, the UV reflecting off the snow can intensify it. So you definitely need to make sure that you're wearing your sunscreen during the winter. Now, if you were concerned about vitamin D deficiency, definitely have a chat with your doctor to see if you actually are deficient in vitamin D. There are much safer ways to get vitamin D, such as in your diet, and if it's necessary, maybe your doctor will tell you to supplement it. So when it comes to sunscreen, you can use a separate sunscreen from your moisturizer, or if your sunscreen is moisturizing enough, you can use that on its own and knock out two steps, or you can use a moisturizer that has sunscreen in it. Either scenario, you need to make sure you're putting on enough sunscreen, which by the way, there's a formula for that. It's two milligrams of sunscreen per centimeter square of skin, which, you know, unless you measure your face, you know, you're not gonna know exactly, but not everyone's gonna require the same amount of sunscreen because our faces and our bodies take up different amounts of space, but, approximately two to three finger length for your face, neck, and ears, and then about a shot glass or maybe more if you taller or wider for the neck down. Now, if you're layering your hydrating and moisturizing steps, you might find a sunscreen like this Neutrogena Invisible Defense Sunscreen Mist to be pretty convenient for your routine. Now, the thing is, you want to make sure that you spray it in your hand and then apply it to your face. You don't wanna just directly spray it to your face because you're probably gonna skip areas. You might get it in your eyes. 
if your mouth is open, you might get a little bit in your mouth. So just do yourself a favor, spray it in your hand, be better able to see how much sunscreen that you're applying and then apply it to your face. Now for more sunscreen recommendations, both mineral and chemical for darker skin, make sure you check out my sunscreen for darker skin playlist. Now, nighttime. So first thing you're gonna do is if you have any makeup on or any hard to remove sunscreen, you are first going to remove that. Now there are many options that you can use to remove your makeup and or hard to remove sunscreen. You can use a micellar water, but my personal favorite because you know I tend to wear a lot of makeup is either a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm. So two affordable cleansing oil options that I have tried and like include the Neutrogena Ultra Light Cleansing Oil and the Hado Labo Cleansing Oil, which I will link below so you can check it out. After you've done that, you're going to cleanse with a gentle cleanser. Now, if you didn't have any makeup on or any hard to remove sunscreen, this is your first step. And again, while the skin is still damp, apply any hydrating toner, essence, or serum if you feel like you need it. Then you apply any necessary treatment products in your routine. And remember what I said earlier about applying your moisturizer first and then your treatment product if you feel a little you know, dry this time of year, make sure you refer back to that. And if you tend to be the type to skip around in the video, look for the timestamp. Oh, and if you're on tretinoin, you definitely want to probably take some baby steps in the winter time. Make sure you check out my video on 10 things to know about tretinoin for the tea. Now, if you were finding that products that you were using fine all year long without any issue are all of a sudden making your skin feel irritated and that your skin is stinging, you may want to take a break from the actives and this is what you do. Cause you know, this actually happened to me recently cause this weather is playing, right? But I'm fine now. So you take all of your actives out of your routine. So that's basically anything that's going to make a change to your skin, your vitamin C, your retinol, exfoliators, all that stuff. You're gonna have a very basic routine of a gentle cleanser and a moisturizer plus sunscreen if your moisturizer doesn't contain sunscreen in it during the day. Then at night, what I would do is I would wash again with that same gentle cleanser. While my skin was still damp, I would apply petroleum jelly on my face. Now there's a whole video on why that isn't crazy. So make sure you check it out so you don't think I'm crazy. I actually don't care if you think I'm crazy, but check out the video because the petroleum jelly might be beneficial in your routine. Now you may need to do this very simple routine for a week, two weeks. It may take some time for your skin to feel back to normal, but once it does, you don't just go all guns a blazing, throwing the actives back in. You slowly introduce them back into your routine. You may need to do the sandwiching method with your moisturizer until you're like really like A1 back on track and then you can go back to your routine as normal. Now, body skin. Now, first of all, you're gonna need to shower in lukewarm water. Now, some of y'all be acting like I stabbed you when I say this, but it's to better your skin. Now, first of all, lukewarm does not mean cold. I don't know why y'all think lukewarm means cold, but it doesn't. It means not cold and also not hot. You don't want the water to be so scorching hot that it's steamy in the bathroom because that hot water can zap the skin, which can worsen trans epidermal water loss, which I already said we suffer from exponentially as people of color. Now, while you were in the shower, the soap and or the body wash that you're using is going to matter as well. Now, in the summertime, in the spring, in the fall, I can go with like these fragrant body washes and be, you know, running through the fields smelling great, right? In the winter time, however, can't do it. Now, some people can get away with fragrance. I can do it in every other season but winter. Now, the problem with fragrance is that fragrance can be drying, it can be irritating, and that's not something you want to add onto skin that's already dry and sensitive from the elements. Now, here's the thing. Some of the best body washes for me in the wintertime tend to also be really boring, so I don't know. You may need to put on a podcast or, you know, do something to spice things up in the shower if you need an experience, right? But these body washes don't dry out my skin, so that is a win. So that Lipicar face and body wash from La Roche-Posay that I talked about earlier that you can use on your face. Yes, you can also use it on your body. It's not very exciting, but it does the trick of cleansing the skin without stripping it, which is 
in our books, especially for the winter. I also like the Aveeno Fragrance Free Body Wash for dry skin, the one that has collodial oatmeal in it. Collodial oatmeal is great for soothing, dry, sensitive skin. Now for your body skin, after you get out that shower and your skin is still damp, that is the best time to put your moisturizer on. So during the day, I like to either use the La Roche-Posay Lipicar Lotion. Remember, that's the one you can use on your face and your body, provided, you know, your lifestyle and your skin type and whatnot call for it. Mine can call for it in the winter time, so I'm good there. Or sometimes I'll use the Vaseline Advanced Repair Lotion for dry skin. But if it's really cold, I'll need a thicker cream or a balm. Um, a couple that I've used and love. The Ceramedics Moisturizing Cream is a good one. And I just finally tried the Vanna Cream Moisturizing Cream. That's also a nice one as well. There's also the fan favorite CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. That might be something to look into if you haven't tried it already. Then during the day, I would follow up with sunscreen. Now, since I am doing a lot of the layering with either a thicker cream or a or more nourishing lotion, I like to use a sunscreen spray. But again, with the sunscreen sprays, you're either going to spray them in your hand and then apply them to your body, or you can spray them to your body and then you make sure that you rub them in with your hands. This helps you to avoid any skip areas because the thing with sunscreen sprays, they're very convenient, but it's also very easy to not put on enough sunscreen. Now, when it comes to my moisturizer at night, I'll probably go even thicker. Now, I do tend to shower during the day and, and at night. For some people, that might be too much, but after I shower at night, while my skin is still damp, I'll apply a very thick cream. I apply something like the Vanna Cream Moisturizing Cream. Or in the past, I've used the La Roche-Posay Lipicar Balm, which is a thicker consistency than the lotion. But recently, I've just used Vaseline. While my skin is still damp, I'll slather the Vaseline on. I don't even really wait for the Vaseline to set in. I just put on whatever cotton pajamas I have on and, you know, keep it pushing. <laughs> but I do kind of wait a couple of hours before I actually get in the bed, before I just go slap my body in with the Vaseline on. But typically, the clothes I'm wearing clothing that's gonna cover the exposed Vaseline areas. Now, for areas that are hard to read, Aquaphor has a body spray that you can spray, and because I get particularly itchy and dry, like in the middle of my back, so I can spray it there and then kind of massage it in if I can reach, or if I can't reach, I'll just spray a little bit more until it's like covered, you know? Another thick balm that I like to use at night, Aveeno has an eczema therapy balm. But again, with the Aveeno balm, you, the best time to put it on is after the shower while your skin is still damp. So now some habits you need to acquire, otherwise you just throw the whole skincare routine away. Now we've already established no hot water. Try to limit the indoor heating. So what I do, I try my best not to have to turn the heat up at all, right? I would rather layer up <laughs> and bundle up, sleep with an electric blanket, and, and have socks on and everything than to turn the heat up. Not only does indoor heating dry out your skin, which can lead it to getting sensitized, but for me, the drying out can dry out my nose which causes a sore throat and it just causes like these post nasal drip issues that I just can't be dealing with, right? But if it's like, oh my God, I definitely need to put the heat on, I'll run a humidifier so that way it kind of combats some of that dryness. Some other things to consider, you know, if you're wearing itchy wool fabrics or any other like itchy kind of materials that irritate your skin, what you want to do is have a satin or a silk barrier in between your skin so that the satin or the silk, which is something that's really breathable, that it's nice on your skin, and then you can do the wool or whatever other itchy material. And you may also want to switch your detergent. Now, I haven't had to go that far, but you may need to switch your laundry detergent to something that's fragrance-free, something hyperallergenic, something that's more conducive to your lifestyle. Now, winter can be absolutely freaking brutal, but even more so if you have a skin condition like eczema or psoriasis. And if that's you and you're having a particularly bad time, it's a good idea to have your dermatologist on speed dial. And if you don't have one, you can ask your primary care doctor to give you a referral. Or for more tips on how to find a Skin of Color Pro near you, make sure you check out my video on said topic. So which of these winter skincare tips do you do or will you now be doing having watched this video? Let me know, get all chitty chatty in the comments. Now, the great thing about these comments, when you leave a comment, you can be helping other people because we're a skincare loving community here. I have seen it happen where people will scour the comments and then like they'll find you and you'll have like conversations 
conversations offline about like your skin and stuff like that. And I'm like, this is such a beautiful thing. And I'm so glad that my videos can make that happen. So get all chitty chatty and talk to your fellow man and woman in the comments. And while you're getting all chitty chatty, you know, <laughs> scroll up and go to the description box because there will be links to all the products mentioned in this video as well as some things that I may be wearing. And follow me on social because those links are all up in the description box as well. And I'll see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.